When you castrate a horse, you're looking to improve their performance on the racetrack. Obviously, you're giving up you know, their stallion services uh, at some future point, but we really are in the business for them to perform on the racetrack. So um, our experience really tells us that you can help a horse. Uh, I think a case in point is Awesome Gem. Uh, we castrated him as a two-year-old. Uh, he didn't run until the middle of his three-year-old year, but now he's coming back in 2012 as a nine-year-old. So we think our statistics indicate that like, they stay sounder longer when uh, they're castrated. And one of the big things is they don't, uh, they don't get as big as, and as strong as they do if, if they still have their testicles. And that's a, a whole nother part of it, but their shoulders and their neck, uh, and they just carry a lot more weight when, when they're colts uh, than they do if they're geldings. So that's really a good thing, because as everybody knows, we really struggle with these horses at times uh, keeping them sound. And it's um, intuitive to think that if you can get them lighter and they can still perform, you have a better shot to keep them sound. When you look at the stallion market, which has really uh, fallen off a cliff in the last like three years, you know that helps us because you have a good prospect and and you know that in all likelihood you're gonna your success or failure um, is going to be determined for the most part on the racetrack. And we tell people we we go to the sales. We're not really looking for for stallion prospects as much as we are looking for derby prospects and really top quality horses on the racetrack. And, and there's a difference there. Uh, and we'd much prefer a much better athlete to buy a much better athlete than a great pedigree and and not as athletic. So that's really helped us because you see a lot of AP Indies that are are grade two and grade three winners, like you can't find a home for them at a stallion farm. So you really have to be so well bred and, and have done so well on the racetrack that you're a can't, you know, you can't miss as a stallion. But all those other horses, you've got to make your hay on the racetrack. So it's really made it a lot easier. The other issue that, uh, that comes into play is when it's a medical issue. Like if you had um, an undescended uh, testicle and you, you had one that was up in, in a horse's belly that was really bothering them. You know, you could just imagine the pain that they go through and what's on their mind every time they walk out of their stall. They know they're going to have to go to the racetrack and they have that, uh, uh, that condition. And if you can think about it, once, you know, their back end is, is, is uh, messed up, you know, their front end, they get off balance and their ankle or, or their knee up front starts to bug them. And it's really directly related to an undescended uh, testicle in their back end. And we've had a good number of those where we, we've taken either one or both of the testicles out uh, and we've had a, a lot better performance on the racetrack. So it's a tricky situation. Nobody wants to give up like the golden ring or the, the prospect of the, of the brass ring at the end of the road. But when you're reasonable and you, you have a horse of moderate uh, pedigree and you think he's a good prospect, it's almost always better to cut them um, and to see if you can get the job done on the racetrack.